In this video, I will show you how to use the EEPROM inside of your Arduino to store data inside of non-volatile memory. Let me start with a simple sketch. I would like to turn on or off this LED by sending a command. So first we have pin mode 13 output. This is our onboard LED defined as output. Then we will serial begin with 9600 baud. And then inside of our loop, I will check if serial dot available, if there is data available on the serial port, then I will read the character. And if the key equals zero, we use the single quotation marks because it's a character. I would like to digital write 13 low. And if we can also write else, if key equals one, then digital write 13 high. So what it does, you can now control your LED by sending one to turn it on or zero to turn it off. And now let me do this. I turn the LED on. I remove Arduino from the power. And if I put it back to power, I would like my LED to stay in the last state. So if it was on, it should still be on. If it was off, it should be off. Everything that is stored inside of the RAM of the Arduino, like a variable is, will be deleted after you remove the power. As you know, the sketch is uploaded to the Arduino and will stay inside of the Arduino. It is non-volatile memory. And then we also have the EEPROM, the electrical erasable programmable read-only memory. And it allows us to store data inside of this non-volatile memory. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. In order to use it, I need to include it. So we need to include the library EEPROM. I will define a global variable called byte LED state. Now inside of our setup, before we enable the output, I would like to turn it on or off, depending on whatever is written inside of our EEPROM. EEPROM.read. The EEPROM has multiple cells and there is a total of 1024 EEPROM bytes that we can access. So the first byte has the address zero and the last byte has the address 1023. But in this example, I will use the first byte. And now I say LED state equals EEPROM read. So whatever is written inside of our EEPROM with the address zero will be stored inside of LED state. And now if LED state equals zero, I will digital write 13 low, else digital write 13 high. So a quick word of caution, because at the very first time, we don't know whatever is inside of our EEPROM. If it's zero, it will be turned off, but most likely it's not zero and it will be turned on. So it will be a little bit of a random generator when we try it for the very first time. But after I write to the EEPROM, I have a defined value inside. And this is exactly what we're going to do inside of our loop. If the key is zero, ee from dot 
write to the address zero my value zero and if the key is one i would like to write to the address zero value one okay one more word of caution the eeprom will be destroyed if you write too often the problem is the eeprom wears out and it has a specified life of 100,000 cycles and so you have to limit the write cycles in my case i only write to the eeprom when i send a command don't ever just copy eeprom write directly into the loop because one eeprom write will take around three milliseconds this would destroy the eeprom in approximately five minutes so don't do it we have it inside here and inside here that's fine let's upload it perfect let's see if the code still works so as you see the led turned on so there was some number inside of the first cell of the eeprom already so if i send zero it turns off and now it should also store zero inside of the eeprom and now let's remove it from the power put it back and after booting you see it stays at zero and if i turn it on and i remove it from the power and then i put it back it turns on again one thing that you have to keep in mind by using eeprom write and eeprom read you can only read one byte and if you have an integer number for example this requires two bytes and in this case you can't use read and write you need to use put and get so let's look into the examples you have put and get and in this case they define a float variable and then they get the float variable on the address zero in this case so by using put and get you can use different data types that are larger than one byte if this video was helpful please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of arduino if you have some questions please leave a comment down below thank you for watching see you in the next lesson